Deciding which credit card or loan is right for you is like trying to choose where you want to eat for dinner. Except when you finally get to the restaurant, the menu is riddled with jargon that no average foodie could understand. So at Credit Karma, we keep things simple. We show you personalized recommendations that align with your money goals and help you turn the confusing fine print into terms you can actually understand. And as a cherry on top, we provide a detailed overview for a new card or loan before you apply. That way, we can help you make decisions faster and with more confidence. Download Intuit Credit Karma today to get started. This is what you do when you've just found that statement handbag on eBay and you want to build an entire wardrobe around it. You start selling to keep buying. Yep, on eBay. Over that all black everything phase, list it and buy all the color. Feeling more vintage than ever? It's out with the new and in with the pre-loved. Next thing you know, you've refreshed your wardrobe basically without spending a dime. Yeah, eBay, the place to buy and sell new pre-loved vintage and rare fashion. Kitties! I hoped and prayed that you would bust out a Crypt Keeper impersonation on this episode. I figured you'd think I would. Dylan, I don't know if you know how timely this episode is going to be, but the week after this episode comes out, or the week of possibly on the geekscape channel geekscape tv will we will be dropping the top 10 episodes of tales from, from the crypt video that i've been working on for a while so well i uh, don't remember being asked what my favorite <laughs> i can't do it the whole fucking episode <laughs> yeah let's let's uh let's drop that <laughs> so one day i will sit down and finish my rewatching of the tales from the crypt i've got i got through like the first season and a half i've seen them like i grew up watching them but now like i don't remember half of them and i will get there eventually (laughs) here's here's a few things that i'll tell you real quick and then this will bleed perfectly into what we're talking about today it is shockingly a short show you know like it didn't even crack 100 episodes it's like 90 something episodes the quality takes a noticeable dip after season five Mm mm-hmm um, season six and seven were like a completely different crew making it and it just feels off a little bit. Okay. I think season seven is entirely stories in England. Like it's just like very, it gets like kind of weird as the seasons go on. But what I remember as a kid was that I loved the Crypt Keeper. He was my favorite part of the stories. And now as an adult, I find him a bit much and and nothing (laughs) has been made more apparent than listening to the 44 minutes that is just the Crypt Keeper doing his pun gag for for have yourself a scary little Christmas. This was like we're going to go track by track as we do. But this is one where like the first like three or four tracks, I was like, man, I'm really into this. And then like as each new track came on, I was like, okay, we're we're still doing this. (laughs) All right. (laughs) There were like, there were moments, and we'll get we'll get into them when they happen on the album. But there were moments, uh, pretty much as it started, where I was like, okay, there's 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 twelve songs of this, <laughs> like, and that was like two minutes into the album. But yeah. I will say, there's also other parts where certain lines will get said and I'll just start chuckling. I'll go, all right, that one got me. That one got me. There's one in particular. (laughs) There's one in particular in song three that that put me over. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely got that vibe of, um, you know, if you just keep swinging, (laughs) eventually you'll hit the ball type idea. Like, 
they they're really going all in on every single pun that they can that they can muster and some uh summer home runs but there's a lot of strikes <laughs> <laughs> and it's your, really uh, it's really realm. unfortunate because of how talented we know that John Kassir is. I feel like they could have done something wild with this album and he does like different parts instead of just doing the Crypt Keeper because he has the ability to. But this really is 12 songs of the Crypt Keeper doing the Crypt Keeper and nothing much else. I will say my favorite parts yeah. of the album from the preview listen is are are the songs that really go out there. Like it'll be no surprise that the Christmas rap is one of my favorites on the album. Yeah. <laughs> because no, no, it no, is no. Like, just weird and has an actual like plot line or, or through line that ties it together. <laughs> yeah, it's it's I mean, it's something. All right. So we start this off. There's yeah. the intro to the album. Which isn't on YouTube. That's how I listen to this. Intro, uh, intro, intro to the album is on the YouTube, isn't it? It says intro uh, to album plus deck the oh, hall. Oh, they of combined Charlie. it. They combined it. Okay, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we do get. I'm into this first one. Deck yeah. the halls with parts of Charlie because it's such. Like you said, it's such a big swing. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it really is. Like we're really going for it here it, it <laughs> so the the opening little bit is is just crypt keeper being crypt keeper and then we do we head into a, a deck the halls parody uh but deck the halls with parts of charlie and it really does jump from like zero to a hundred like oh okay we're stringing the house with body parts in the opening song that's what yeah. we're into now this is this is the terrifier of christmas albums <laughs> Deck the halls with parts of Charlie Fa la 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 Make the Yuletide grow Sonali Fa la 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 Stocking stuffed with ears Well, here's the thing though <laughs> Like, I almost think that the problem Well, I don't know <laughs> I, I think that I think that what happens here is like I get that you have to have a big intro but yeah. it's almost like this is as high as it gets in craziness. <laughs> and then, like, some of the other tracks seem mild by comparison. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. When, like, the opening line deck the halls with parts of Charlie, make the Yule time gross and gnarly, stocking stuffers with ears and fingers, chop from all those caroling singers. <laughs> like, we really do jump into the gore fest minutes moments into the album to where i guess i'll take back what i said earlier this isn't what the album is from start to end because we do pull back we pull way back like <laughs> there are definitely By the next song yeah By the next song is like the next song so i mean i don't want to jump right out, out of this but we'll say that like the next song is juggle bills which yes. is not good Financial crunch has even hit Saint Nick. He's had to lay off. Juggle Bills. Juggle Bills reminds me of a sequel to that 12 Days of Christmas that you and well, th a bunch and of our listeners like. <laughs> that's what I was about to say is Juggle Bills feels like it'd be better placed on a Bob Rivers album. Yep, exactly. Like, <laughs> like that's like the vibe it gives off. It's it's not really particularly punny and it's not a lot of fun. Yeah, so the but song is is a is a parody of of Jingle Bells. Um, as you have probably heard, I'm hoping Matt's going to put a little bit of the song in. Yeah, I don't oh, even we'll know play how you clips do of the that. songs. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's a parody of Jingle Bells, but it's all about how Santa is broke uh, because he's providing for everyone in the world. Um, and that's the joke for three and a half minutes. <laughs> it's so long. I feel like the worst part is that the longest songs are also the roughest premises. Yes. Like they're there's so lot so juggle bills just sits there, but then we get rewarded for our oh. time on juggle bills because like we said, when they go for the big obscure absurd swings, when we get to we wish you'd bury the missus. <laughs> it's so good. 
Smith's dear neighbor is the Smith down the hill. Henry and Linda and the kids Jane and Bill. We hate This is the one that like it starts and I'm like, yeah, this is this is silly. This is funny. Like she's rotting in the house. Yes, we went for it again. It's really it's it's a cute way of doing this. As soon as he said She's hurting property value. <laughs> I fucking lost it. <laughs> I don't know why that made me chuckle. It just felt so out of nowhere where we're like, we're talking about her smelling. We're talking about like how crazy this guy is. And then just the pullback and go, bro, she's hurting property value. I'm fucking well, losing it. <laughs> and you know what works for that line? And, you know, listen, this might be coming from someone who's got a little bit of experience about talking about parody songs. Yeah. Um, but we, we talk about this a lot on Weird Algorithm where something that Weird Al is very, very good at is what we call like the selfish look at something horrible. Yeah. Um, so like there's a song called Slime Creatures from Outer Space, mm -hmm. which is literally about slime creatures from outer space coming and destroying the earth. Yeah. But the song from Al's perspective is about how their slime keeps ruining his carpet when they come to try to take over <laughs> and like how inconvenient it is for him to not be able to enjoy television with all the war going on. Yeah. Like, like that's kind of what that property value line does for me so perfectly is that it is the like most selfish, dumb way to look at the situation because as the lyrics tell us, this man killed his wife last Christmas. Yes. And the body and her, is just still there. Yes. And it's hurting property value. He's not going to be able to sell this home eventually. Now, <laughs> now, Dylan, I will say we have talked highly about those big swings, but I think this next, tr <laughs> this next track is too big of a swing. I think so as well. Which is O Tannenbaum as Bo Tattlebaum, which according to the Tales from the Crypt Wikipedia fandom page, uh, is a parody about embalming a living family. <laughs> yes. Chestnuts and holly and pine fill the air And songs of the season are heard everywhere Though everyone's... Yes, it is. Um, and forgetting some of those family members and part of the song is about ch get, like chasing them down and embalming them. Yep. Um... <laughs> Sometimes, and you know what? This goes back to my issues with Terrifier as a person who's only seen the first one, so it's not like we're experts, but yeah, it at some point it gets too mean. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not having fun anymore. But yeah, like, this is definitely the one that's um, too far. This like is it gets, a it's, it's <laughs> the first couple are like, yeah, that's cute. And it's just, we're just, we're still going for it. Yeah. It's <laughs> All not, in. All yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's dark. Yeah. Very, very, very dark. Um, I don't think that we need to talk too much about the, the Christmas card from the Crypt Keeper. It's a quick little 50 second poem that yeah. he reads. And besides, that's just getting in the way of your favorite track. So let's talk about the Christmas rap. Do you, do you not like the Christmas rap? I don't mind the Christmas rap. It's the only like non full blown parody of a song. Listen here, the Christmas rap is something that should have became as big as like the goofy raps that people cheer about around Halloween time. Like, yeah. like this would fit right in with Nightmares on My Street or some Elvira shit or, or like that Freddy album. It's absolutely perfect. Like, yeah, it's so it's, it, we've got that like eighties fucking funk synth going. As Which, I mean, this was mid-90s when this dropped. This was like 92, 93. Okay, we, 92. Had fully, we had fully invested into the East Coast rap scene at this That's point. true. This is, like, not, this is not gangster rap Crypt Keeper. No. This is the Adams Family rap Crypt Keeper. Like, that's what this is right now. This is some fat boy shit. 
that we're listening to. But every line is about is the Christmas list of different horror villains, and it's a lot of fun. And I think it's a nice break from the death and dismemberment that we've listened to so far, besides Juggle Bills, which I'm just going to pretend isn't on this album, because it, it yeah. really is an outlier of, like, <laughs> from one extreme to the other. Yeah. Uh, but, but this I, is this is definitely, I would say, this, I wish you'd bury the misses and deck the halls with parts of Charlie, um, are, I would say, the three high points of this album. And out of those three, I think Christmas Rap is the only one that would make my playlist. Probably. If, if this Probably. was on streaming, I think Christmas Rap is the only thing to make my playlist, because I don't like my Christmas playlist to be too dark. Yeah, I feel like the other ones... If they like, if they're buried amongst like 400 Christmas songs and you're shuffling it, it's like the occasional nice surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Here and there, where you're like, all right, this is fun. Now, listeners, you might realize that we're only on track seven. Yeah. So for us saying that all of the highlights have happened <laughs> is really setting up how we feel about the latter half of this album, which again, like, I think the problem when we did the Pokemon christmas album yes that shit was an easy breezy ep yep and that's what this should have been like it's yeah. just like no matter you could completely was it? i feel like that was a full album hold on check though because i also think all those tracks were like a minute and a half i to will two yeah 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 I'll, I'll check timing and shit there's 12 songs on this okay 10 songs on this album okay mm -hmm. so yes a couple songs shorter however track one four minutes oh, track no. two Two minutes and 50 seconds. Oh, no. Track three, two minutes and 30 seconds. Track okay. four, three minutes. Track five, three minutes and 25 seconds. Oh, Track no. Six, so that's like a 30-minute album. Two minutes and 50. Yeah, dude. It's like averaging 30 minutes. I think your the argument is is that the Pokemon Christmas Bash is a much better album. than. than well, I, but you know what? I'll go off this, too. The Christmas... The, the Pokemon Christmas Bash album does different things. Every single <laughs> song is a different style. We had yeah. like, you had carols. There, I think there was a ska song in there at some point. Yeah. Like it, every, every song was something different. And not every single song was a parody turning everything into Pokemon stuff. Like some of them were just a sincere like, hey, we're going to sing Jolly Old St. Nicholas or whatever. Yeah. Like, like, I think that that's the problem is that this is so indebted to the bit that yeah. you could rearrange this entire track. And I think our standout tracks, if if this was reversed and it started with Have Yourself a Scary Little Christmas, we might be thinking that Deck the Halls with Parts of Charlie is one of the worst. Tra like, yep. it's just I like, I think you're right. You just, I think you just hit an exhaustion point it's where you're just like, so okay. <laughs> one note, which is why I would push back and say that the only way to listen to this album or to enjoy all the tracks on this album is to have all of them in a giant five to 600 song Christmas playlist okay. where you're just getting like one of the songs at random every once in a while. Yeah. And I think that you would always enjoy whatever song it was at that point. But and like listening to these back listen. to back to back is just too much. That it's would be a fun game, especially if you're listening to the playlist with other people. And they yeah. like stop and listen for a second and then they look at you. Yeah. Like, like the yeah. amount like Yeah. I heard the word crypt crypt miss so many times it lost <laughs> meaning at a certain point. <laughs> Looking for a new seasonal anime? Wanna know what new anime music is out there? Looking to add a new waifu or husbando to the list? Or are you just looking for a modern or classic anime to add to your plan to watch list? My name is Nick, and I run the Waifus and Weeboos podcast. And you can check me out on Geekscape.net. I think we can speed run the back half of this a little bit more. We get a very short introduction to the Crypt Keepers family Christmas before the song yep. actually starts. Mm -hmm. It's a parody of Good King Wences, and it's basically just talking about tragedies at a family Christmas dinner. Yeah. Um, it's fine. A long time ago. There was a family dinner, quiet kiddies, my relatives would all come there to dine. Yeah, I have my I have my own beef of, with the original Good King Wenzel Sloss. Oh, see, I like that song. I like that song, but there's some stuff that was brought to light as it was being sung 
in a movie that we watched for next week's episode. Okay. So it's sung by some carolers that I'm like, all right, this is a bullshit song. But <laughs> but fair. That's fair. for the future. This is fine. That's the thing is nothing is is standing out as awful. It's- Nothing is awful. It's just like, we're still doing this. Yeah, we're still here. Then we get a, another poem, Twas the Fright mm-hmm. Before Christmas, which is just about Santa visiting a crypt that has been booby-trapped. Yep. It's perfectly fine. It's it's, it's, it's nightmare. Bef- it's, it's lock, shock, and barrel. It's Yeah. Let me pull up this one. Uh, I 12 love- Days of Cryptmas. The 12 Days of Christmas, you know I love to just go to what the 12th day is and read everything to well, the Well, I'm really bummed out that we hadn't heard this before our rankings because it might have might have changed it a little bit, you know? Do you think it would have? Probably not. On the first day of Christmas, my cool love gave to me a trip to the mortuary. On the second day of Christmas, my cool love gave Man, to me. Man, no lyric sites have 12 Days of Christmas lyrics. Oh, no. We'll just have to skip to the end and listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. Hey, right, here we go. Right, here we go. On the 12th day of Christmas, my cool love gave to me 12 axemen laughing, 11 choppers chopping, 10 heads come flopping, 9 stranglers strangling, 8 manglers dangling, 7 werewolves howling, 16 disemboweling, 5. It really just feels like they just threw a bunch of horror things into a hat and were like, all right, this is going to work and this is going to work and this fits in the rhyme scheme and this fits in the rhyme scheme. And that's what I feel like we've done with 90% of these songs. <laughs> yeah, no, let's get to these last three tracks. We we have a quick intro to the Revenge of the Crypt Keeper and then we get this Up on the House Top parody. Uh, which is about kidnapping Santa from spreading holiday joy. Who ordered all this nauseating cheer? I've had Christmas up to here. I'm mad and I'm not gonna take it Do you it feel anymore. like we've, we, so I've noticed, <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of these songs are about kidnapping or harming Santa Claus. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now that, don't love it. No. Now that I'm out there, don't love that. Not a big yeah. fan of that. Um, I prefer if Santa's involved in my horror, I want Santa to be doing the killing, not yes. Santa be the one getting killed. Yeah, Santa's got to be the source of evil, not yes. evil being done upon Santa. Yeah. But I think we end pretty okay. Uh, we get a Have Yourself a Scary Little, little Christmas. Christmas. It's perfectly fine. A merry little Christmas. Make the you This is an all point bulletin. Madman McRae has just escaped from the state mental hospital. Suspect is considered extremely dangerous. But I do have to shout out one that I really, really liked <laughs> was the New Year's Eve ending that we get. Which <laughs> is old should old cadavers, cadavers be forgotten? Be forgot. So old cadavers tend to rot. They're all good friends of mine. I throw a party New Year's. This Eve. was a fun one to me. <laughs> I I love that that you were able to to listen to the end of this album and find something you enjoyed. Like you weren't. Uh, listen, all enjoyed spent. is a bit of a stretch. I'm just saying that I liked the change of lyrics that they went with for "Should Old Acquaintance Be Forgot." Like I was like, this is this is another one of those big swings to me because "cadavers" is not a natural rhyme to acquaintances. Oh, and there's a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> bent rhyming and speeding through syllables to make them fit throughout this album. Which is my least favorite part of any parody song made by people that aren't great at doing parody songs when they're like, oh, it works, but I'm just going to say the words real fast. And then it fits yeah. in there um, or stretch things out that don't fit. Like, I think the best uh, uh, people that parody songs are able to find words and syllables that fit much look, more well together. Look, again, I, I get it. I have a Weird Al podcast. Yeah, I know. I know. People are sick of hearing <laughs> that's, this. That's but, like I'm... but, I mean, 
that is one of his skill sets is that you will very rarely find him doing a parody where he doesn't follow the absolute melody and inflection yeah. of the original to a T. Like there yeah. isn't like a lot of liberty where he's like, oh, I want to really fit this joke in. So I've got to sing this part extra fast. Yeah. And I mean, that goes there. all the way back to a song that we were praising earlier, which is Wish wish you'd bury the missus like yeah they're really to, trying to we cram wish that you would bury the missus we wish you would bury the missus like, yes. <laughs> and i feel like that one's just so poorly done that it yeah. somehow becomes enjoyable oh yeah like, it's one of those things that's what that's what you you dig about the end is it's kind of the british humor thing where we're yeah. just gonna do one thing over and over again and then it's gonna stop being funny but we're gonna keep doing it and eventually it's funny again Yep. And I think that's it what you get It worked for Family there. Guy and it can work for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just a real low bar that we're, yeah. s- we're setting Well, there. <laughs> Well, Dylan, I hope that you had a scary little Christmas. Oh, I did have a scary little Christmas. Oh, no, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> have a week. Whoa. Oh, whoa.
You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 